right, guys, just before we start this episode, I do say episode three instead of episode four, which is what I should have said. Uh, I hope you can forgive me. Um, I'm just doing all the episodes in a bit of a whirly fashion. So when I say episode three, I mean episode four. On with the show. Recording in progress. <laughs> all right. So here we go. Bang, here we go. Come on, guys. Welcome to Actors Unscripted. This is episode three with your host, Benito Costano. And today I have another special guest. We have Billy Boulay. Now, she is an actor who has actually starred in a Disney Plus series, fucking fancy, uh, (laughs) called A Small Light. She played Anne Frank in a very, really cool drama series. You should give it a watch if you have it. And she's also in The Worst Witch, which is another series, which, where where, where did that... um, where did you put that on? Where was that on? Netflix. Netflix. Sweet, sweet. Awesome. So today is going to be a very interesting conversation because Billy is someone who's, you know, achieved something which is which is absolutely amazing. It's something that a lot of actors, especially our age, around 18, 19, we always dream of that point, you know, being able to get to a certain point where we get on set with all these amazing people and amazing creatives. Now, my question, my first question to start off the podcast would be, how has your journey so far changed the way that you view the world? So from when you were a little little girl to now, how has that sort of expanded? I mean, I mean the world's the same, obviously. I think something that I learned quite from an early stage because I've moved countries a lot uh, and cities is that you just, you've really got to take it day by day, month by month. Like, trying to plan your life in advance and having like, you know, you have your goals set out and you know, you have like this rough timeline or whatever it is. But what you need to know is that if it doesn't, if you don't succeed in that goal in the timeline that you created, it doesn't mean that you're never gonna succeed in it. Mm. It just means that that wasn't the right time, you know, because things always happen. Like I lived in Paris, suddenly I'm moving back to England. Didn't know how to read or write, had to learn straight away when I got into school. So you just have to take things day by day and not try and plan so hard your life that there's there's no room for movement because mm-hmm. that is when your schedule starts to, you know, crumble apart and then you start to, you know, have a breakdown is because you have this thing, you have such a set clear goal and mind and exactly how you're going to do it. And one thing goes, everything else is going to collapse. You mm-hmm. need to have a loose structure on what you want to do, obviously, but it can't be so rigid because life, you don't know what life's like going to throw at you at all. You know, you get auditions in and they say, you know, you're filming in two days. Like, you, yeah, what's you, going on there? You need to know, you need to have that preparation that yeah. things will just be flown at you definitely, definitely as an actor. Right, 100%. Yeah, I, I do agree with you there. Like, you can't be, and even in day to day life, you can't be completely rigid because, again, you're going to have things that, are yeah. going to happen when you're naturally moving around you're naturally living your life because at this stage as well not everything not everything should be about career in my opinion not everything should be driven oh, we're 18 we don't have a mortgage to pay exactly well there's right. that as well depending look depending on your own personal circumstances yes maybe you do have to worry about right, yes. I need money to live fair enough but in terms of like these end goals that we all have in our heads whether we do or not it's it is important to remember that this part after college, if you don't go to university, th- this part of life is a new stage. It's a new stage yeah. where you get to learn and you get to develop, which is which is really important. I think as well, like I'm also curious, why why did you want to do acting? Like, what was it about acting that you wanted to do? Well, I don't know. And that's it's fine a because I did this at such a young age. Like Same. it's, I got pushed. No, I didn't get pushed into it, but I, I was. No, I did not get pushed into it, but I was attracted to it yeah. a lot more because I'm dyslexic and I'm not good at writing essays and I'm not good at all the academic subjects mm-hmm. in that sense. So I've always been like going more towards the arts. So you know, when in um in Paris in during lunchtime we would have like these activities to do, and there would be you know calligraphy, maths. We did actually have a math, so I don't know why people went to that one, but besides the point. And then we had, you know, like the drama one. Always go to drama one since I was, you know, six years old. Always went. And I didn't know it was a career path at all. People always just 
put me in the drama thing because I was it was what I was good at yeah. you know I didn't know my alphabet until I was seven like I still struggled with it so for me drama was the only way to go yeah. and then obviously when I got to um Liverpool my sister started dance classes and my mum put me into their drama section and it just kind of peeled from there amazing so it really just came from again just that sort of that point where you just you just you want to, wanted to create at such a young age that it's just like it's fun I'm gonna say the cringiest thing go on, ready, go on. You ready for it I'm ready for the cringe <laughs> I didn't choose acting acting chose me oh <laughs> <laughs> Because honestly, though, I like was Fair four enough. years old. I was four years old. I didn't know what it was. I just kept doing it. Yeah, uh, that's, I totally understand that. Hundred percent. Like when I was younger, I'd just do. I'll do. I'll have my own little world in my room, yeah. and I'd just be fighting nothing. Yeah, like it's fighting, doing a story out of nothing, yeah. just with the air. Yeah. So it's that sort of thing, like even breaking beds by accident because I do karate kicks over a bed, yeah. like you know stuff like that. Exactly. It, it just, all, yeah. It all just <laughs> comes out, you know. It's, it's just when you're an actor, it just comes out. Like you don't see a four-year-old going, "I want to be an accountant." You know, that is something that they find on a later stage. With acting, it's just something that is in these little children. Yeah, it's Im- it's imagination. Yeah, That's what yeah it is. it's just there and it's just nurtured. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, for those that are watching, Billy, I want you. Well, you can give. I, I think this would be quite interesting from your perspective. What three pieces of advice would you give to those watching, right? About, you know, how to really pursue acting as a career, like at our age. What three pieces, like crucial, critical advice? And you can take as long as you need, because honestly, don't don't stress over it. It's hard. <laughs> it is. It definitely depends on each person. Um, okay, you ready? I'm so okay. One thing, I don't know if this is going to completely correlate to what you're saying, but I think it does. Rejection. Mm -hmm. Advice, get used to it. Mm -hmm. Rejection has nothing to do with your ability or your talent. It just means, you know, I I audition, you know, what? So many projects and, you know, out of the 100, I'll get one, whatever it is. It doesn't, like, the rest of the rejection doesn't mean that I'm bad. It doesn't mean that I'm talentless. It just means that those projects weren't right for me. And it's something that you have to then go and find. You have to find your journey and your story. So rejection, at a young age, try and get used to it. Try and not let it, um, what's it called? De- something, derail you. Let De- it not derail yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, don't let it, yeah. don't let it make and you like. And if you're starting acting now, let's say if you didn't start when you were six years old, you know, and I've had my rejection I'm used to it you start at 18 and you start to have the rejection at 18 you're like fucking hell you know I'm 18 two years I'm in my 20s I'm getting rejected now like this can't be my lifestyle like this can't be my path like I need to get a job I need to get money like I obviously understand that side of it but if you're passionate enough about it and that's what you want to do rejection is the main part with acting it is the main part you have to work but the work is so rare and the rejection is like wow right up there so at the stage you're going in just know that it's normal and it's not based on your skills mm-hmm. that's number no. one <laughs> number two advice let me think blah, 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 blah. oh discipline you need discipline really if you're definitely a freelance actor you know how you decide not to do drum school or uni where there isn't this uh structure that's been done for you that you have to do like it's literally have to do you have to make your own structure when you're freelance and you have to have the discipline to stick to it and you have to have the discipline to want to improve your skills and want to go out there want to read plays want to watch plays want to watch films maybe write a film like you need the discipline to want to be able to do those things and not just lie around in bed and wake up at 12 you know it's which is something I'll be honest discipline does come with being in school and drama school um which really helped me get my discipline done because obviously now I'm freelance. Yeah. But I still wake up, you know, at eight, nine o'clock in the morning and I get up and I get ready for my day, you know? But I just, it's so important to have that because if you don't have that discipline to get up in the morning when you're freelance and start on acting when you have no acting to do, it can go into a really just declining state of your mentality. Like you can get, it, like not great if you don't have that discipline. So I say that's number two advice. 
work on your discipline, work on your schedule. It's like a double advice. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Counts, counts. Number three, um, let me think. Gosh, it's a hard one. Don't compare yourself. Everyone's at different stages and there's not a right stage to be at because there isn't, there's not an exact structure to life on how to, when, when to succeed and when to get this, and when to do that. So comparing yourself to, you know, Millie Bobby Brown, 19, right? Let's pretend that I'm 19. Mm-hmm. Imagine me comparing myself to Millie Bobby Brown. You can't, you just can't. She had this amazing opportunity with Stranger Things and from there she blew up, you know? Mm-hmm. I haven't had that yet. You know, and it doesn't mean that I won't get it. It'll just be time. You know, you know, see Samuel Jackson. He got his big break at 40. Yeah, exactly. You're going to tell me that Samuel Jackson is worse than Millie Bobby Brown because he didn't get his at 18? <laughs> no, you're not going to say that. Like, it just is a completely different stage. And you'll get to that stage if you work hard enough. But it might not be at 18. And you yeah. might not get it in the two years that you work. You know, you have to really work hard on yourself and like be persistent with it properly Mm. persistent so I think you just don't compare yourself because it's horrible to think about second of all and it can just create loads of jealousy which is ugly it's really ugly and you you just have to focus on yourself focusing on others isn't going to help yourself it's not going to help you get to their stage so you have to just focus on yourself see you can think that's Millie Bobby Brown. She's done amazing for her age. I'll be able to do that. Maybe not at that age, but I'll be able to have that big break. That is being envious. Oh, I cannot wait to be in your position. Jealousy is, I want to be in your position. Very different mindsets. Mm-hmm. And they can easily be swayed from e- each other. So I think and so the comparing will go into jealousy. So you just have to get that yeah. out of your mind. It's your own world. Yeah, I think comparison is uh, is. I mean, I talked about this in another episode, but comparison does have this thing where you end up getting lost in another person's life, and then you forget you, what you're doing yourself, and yeah. like it just doesn't. It just doesn't really help you out, especially as a as an actor. It doesn't help you out because if you're constantly comparing yourself, which is very hard not to do, I'm sure everyone has done it thousands and thousands of times because it's inevitable it's like ingrained in our brains right but yeah a hundred percent the comparison thing is something that we all sort of need to just drive away from and worry about our own lane you know worry about where we're trying to get to and it's it's your own story you know yeah don't don't worry if like you said samuel jackson is doing all this stuff well he started as when he was 40 like you said it's completely different and yeah. if you do start at 40, so what? At least you're doing what you love, you know? What's the matter That's with that? Exactly. Do exactly. I want to wait till 40? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just about like keeping going. And another one I'd like to add on, it's, it's the most cliche thing, right? But I'm telling you, when you hit rock bottom, when you feel like you're you're in the pits, right? And you just go, you, oh, I'm, I want to give up. I just want to quit. There's just no point, which we will all end up getting to at some point. There's going to be, a, it's inevitable. If we, if you're trying to achieve something that is, you know, requires a lot of your time and effort, yeah. you will get to a point where you're going to be in the pits is what I call it. And you're going to tell yourself to stop doing it. But the magic thing is, is that if you push, if you keep on pushing, even if that does mean you're going to end up getting to 40, you will make it. Yeah. That's also inevitable. Yeah. Like, if you don't give up and you keep on going, there's no way you're not going to do anything. There's no way. Yeah. It's impossible. The chances are so high if you keep yeah. going. Yeah. And that's something that everyone that's watching, I implore you. I implore you, keep going. There's no point. If you invested your time into this thing and you love it, don't give up. Don't quit. Cause it will you will you'll feel like, you know, it's like a disservice to yourself. Yeah. You love it so much. Don't just don't quit. But yeah, enough of my rant. Um, <laughs> it's just something I'm quite passionate about, you know, like quitting is something that is 
happens to everyone and it gets to everyone. And you just want to stop, but just don't. Yeah. Just don't. Just keep keep pushing on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really like those three pieces of advice. That's good. I like them. That is good. Now, since you have, you know, you, you have done, for example, a small light, which is, which is amazing, which is a fantastic piece of work. Do you, at any point, you know, feel any pressure to, you know, constantly have to, improve or constantly develop your skills is there any sort of pressure that you find where it's like oh if I don't do um I don't know if I don't do a certain acting technique if I don't maintain my practices that I'm gonna get you know worse or whatever technique wise no once you've learned them they're always in your head and you can always pick them up I think that's just muscle memory really when it comes to techniques I think skill-wise is different. I have a lot of pressure to practice my skills as in accents and fitness. You know, that for me is a lot of pressure. You know, I get rolling auditions in that are accents and I've got to hand them in in four days. I've got to book an accent coach. I've then got to pay for the accent coach and I've got to do the accent. It has to be good enough after one session of training to be able to do the audition and send it in. Mm. You know, usually it's not. And personally for me, I'm fine with that because I feel like I'm 18 and I've got time to learn my accents and I'm just starting my schedule of improving those skill sets now. So the fact that, you know, couldn't do the Irish accent two days ago because it sounded appalling is nothing on me because I can still hear that I can do it. It's just not good yet because I've had one lesson on it. So I do have a lot of pressure to do that and I have a lot of pressure for my agents. Well, not really, but I feel like I owe it to them to be able to have as many skills as I can so that any audition that I can that comes in I can do it which is why I'm improving my fitness because I want to do stage combat I want to do gymnastics so I'm yeah. able to do any of that that comes in because it's always a plus you know you come down to the last final three or two actors mm-hmm. at that point you all can act you all can do the role when it comes to the final three after that, it's just about these slight nuances that you do, the slight mannerisms that you can do. And if it's like, you know, I'm just going to throw out, like, let's say Spider-Man. Mm. Me and Cybob, those two. We're exactly the same, let's say. Slight nuances difference. Yeah. But I can do flips. Mm-hmm. I can do loads of flips. And I'm good with it. She can't at all. They go, okay. Then then you're thinking of the character. Yeah, and they yeah. do I think it's like... Yeah, she gives more vibes of that one. Yeah, she, she does flips. She does flips. Yeah. So does Spider Man. Give it there to you her. Go. Yeah. I want that. I want to be able to have yeah. all the skills I can have as an actor and be able to do them. That's why I think, personally, I think, well, I'm slightly biased, but I think acting is one of the hardest jobs is because you have to be every single person known to man. You have to be able to do everything. Then, then again, I'm going to use it again. Take an accountant, what do they need to know? Numbers, maths, money. I don't know what an accountant does, I'll be fair. I might do a bad example, but you know what I mean? They've got that. Do they need to know how to do a backflip and do an Irish accent? Whilst, you know, knowing how to breathe underwater for five minutes? No, they don't. We have to know everything. It's so much work. And then when you get a job like me getting Anne Frank, I had then have to do history work. I had to look into the politics of it and understand the politics of it. And then I had to look into all the World War II stuff and Anne Frank and know all of blah, 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 blah. It's like, you need to know everything. Like you are every single person and a historian, a bloody blue avatar, you know, you're all of it. So it's just, that's the pressure that I have because that panics me. Right. But in a good way because I love it and I want to do it. I, li- I do want to do it. Mm. But for me, it's exciting. However, stressful. I understand. I understand the 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 desire to, for knowledge, right? For knowing loads of different things and figuring out how to do them. That is, yeah, that you know, that is a good thing, you know, to keep you motivated, to keep you to keep you ready. But I do think, right, Billy, like, of course, to have to want to figure out everything and have the most versatile, you know, repertoire. It's a great thing. However, I just you know take it with a pinch of salt right for for yourself right yeah. <laughs> if 
Like <laughs> you, you don't have to learn every single thing. You don't have to like find out, all right, how do I build a pyramid, for example? Obviously, that's a crazy example. But remember, those things usually happen, right? For specific roles that are given yeah. towards you. Yeah. What I mean is that I want a basic knowledge of it. Of course, I don't want, of course. I don't want I know to what you mean. finish every you... single one of these skills. That's a bit nuts. But I, I've got so much time on my hands, I might as well fill of course. it up. I totally, I totally agree with that. You and know? I'm also not saying I'm going to be able to do this in like two years. I mean, this is like a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 100%. I do agree with you that it's good to, you know, I want to try this, this and this because yeah. having that understanding is an advantage yeah. and it's great. But also don't get too stressed about it because you you as you as your career is going to develop you're going to form your own brand your own brand is going to be formed right so whatever you're going to be doing is is going to fit within the stuff that you do know yeah and you and you are really good at so yeah don't worry too much about it you know <laughs> don't worry too much <laughs> i know i know i totally get where you're coming from but don't yeah. stress too much right okay now on the topic of like learning and on growth and everything like that, you know, trying to uh, aspire for different types of knowledge, right? Do you think that allowing consistent growth, like every day you're, you know, you're pushing 1% more, you're 1% better than the day yesterday or 50% better. Do you think that as an actor and an actor's perspective and an actor's world, that having that idea is, you know, healthy, like a good idea, like, yeah, maybe I can um, develop so and so certain skill one uh, percent yeah. more, even if it's a little tiny bit. Even if I'm not feeling good today or I'm not doing that well on this thing, what do you think about that? Hundred I mean, percent. First of all, the skills that we do are so hard. You most of the time, you know, you can't pick an accent up in a day. So having that, okay, I'm just going to grow a little bit. I'm going to do one percent better, two percent better. You know. By the end of the week, you're 7% better, even if you just did that 1%. And it's filling your day up with that. I think it's really important. Mm. And even just as a person in general, growth is important. And we do grow naturally, like, as in not height-wise, I mean, like, personality-wise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's just having, being able to combine both personal growth and professional growth is really nice to have hand-in-hand. Hand. Mm. Because for me that's how your career will grow you have to grow with your career and your uh professional growth has to also grow as well like the more jobs you do the more you'll know and the more you'll be able to do for the next job you know every single job you'll get at even at acting you'll get five percent better at acting because you have a better knowledge of it mm -hmm. each character is different so you'll be able to be two percent better at the different variations that you can do so growth probably like one of the most like top three most important things and allowing that to come in not being so set in your ways or close-minded for it to to obstruct you in a sense because some things growth will act genuinely sometimes just slap you in the face like you you can have a wake-up call about anything and instead of defying it or or being repulsed by whatever it is if you just look at it understand it and take it in you're growing more and you just become a better first of all you become a better person you will become a better actor and in general you're just you'll have a better sense of what you are doing and, and like life-wise as well like everything will just feel more settled after you grow like you just keep on doing it and it's something that it's not you're not going to finish your personal growth at like 25 you know oh. it's like a constant thing but it's nothing to be scared of personally it's nothing that it's nothing that you need to worry about because it's a lifetime thing. Even if you don't want to grow, you still do. And it's just about taking that in and absorbing it in and realizing your growth rather than being it like a subconscious growth. Yeah. Sense. Yeah. hundred percent. That makes, that makes total sense. And you know, then what would you, what would you think then for a young actor, right? What would you think perhaps not, maybe not the first, but one of the initial things that they should be, open to grow like something to develop like what what would you think open to grow young yeah actor. like sorry i didn't really word that well what would um what is something that you think young actors should be most open to develop in their early years 
I think variation, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. As a young actor, you know, you might love being, you know, naturalistic, fine. But be open to grow in different departments. Try non-naturalism, try dance, try singing, da 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 If you do that at a younger age, it's so much better. Because once you do it at an older age, it, it will be harder for you to do it. You're already stuck in your way as being naturalistic. And it's hard for you to break into a different um, film or TV yeah. or theatre category. You know, you start to do that at a younger age and you have loads of different things and knowledge about it. So much better. You'll be able to get jobs in and understand it and know how to do it and book the job, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you just stick to one thing and you're like, I don't like non-naturalism, it's weird. That's not real theatre, like whatever people say. You know, then you come to a stage in your career, you might be really successful and you're like, there's this amazing play going on, it's non-naturalistic, let's say da 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 and you're like, okay, fine, you know, maybe the naturalism scene is dying off a little bit. Maybe it's just like a bit dead, nothing really new and vamped up that's exciting you. You try it out, you can't do it. And then you're forever stuck in your non -natu your naturalism play until you grow for the other one. But it's so much harder to do that when you're older. So once you start to do that when you're younger and you're open to different variations and different styles and having different people's opinions, like redirection and criticism. I love it. I love receiving criticism and I love receiving redirection. And I love to give it as well. I think it's helping people. I think it's a nice thing to do. You know, I don't see it as a negative, but loads of people do see it as a negative. And that will obstruct you and that will close your mind off to other things. Having, you know, different variations of being open to that, open to criticism, is just at a younger age, much better. To do or when you're first starting off yeah definitely if if you have the opportunity at a young age to know what you want to do that it is acting definitely you know encourage that variation i do agree with that like definitely test out new things luckily definitely in like, so many different styles like mm. so luckily because we both went to college we were able to explore different styles that we probably wouldn't have if we hadn't have gone hadn't gone to a performing arts college yeah. but that is a benefit so, yeah, if you can find different courses, different workshops, anything online that, you know. Even watching it. Watching yeah, it. even watching it, 100%, just studying it, looking at it, doing it, all of that stuff will help you just expand your knowledge. Yeah. It, it, the same thing goes if you went into, like, an art exhibition or something. You looked yeah. at paintings. Um, you looked at what different artists do. It's sort of it's everything to do with inspiration or inspiring yourself to develop. Well, and it's, it allows you a lot more. like you look at like painters let's say I recently just went to an exhibition on Monday to the Philip Brewston um mm -hmm. exhibition and you look at like the colors he uses and you well my dad knows a lot about him so he was explaining yeah. to me the colors and the meaning of why he did it um and you, you have that and you understand it then you go and watch a film you'll see that filmmakers will use lighting like in the same way yeah so all of these are like connected to what you do so then when you're on set and they're shining like a green light on you, you're like, why the hell are they shining a green light on me? You'll know. You'll also know a deeper understanding of your character and what they're feeling outside of it, you know? It's, it all helps, that's all knowledge. And then you come into um, a meeting and you're able to talk about, you know, first galleries or you're able to talk about films and the lighting in the films. It's such a big plus. You know, when I was doing my... Uh, when I was going for all my um, agent meetings mm -hmm. and I was sitting there and I was able to talk about films and I was able to like talk, even as, even though 18 is like not young, but with the knowledge that I have, they were impressed and they really enjoyed that. And they think, aha, this is a person who really enjoys what she does and not just the acting thing. She enjoys watching it. Mm -hmm. She enjoys analyzing it. You know, she enjoys looking at different types of art, not just drama art you know and for for you to be able to go into a room full of people that are so much older than you and you're able to talk about it is so important you know I've been in a room with like 70 year olds and being able to talk about it and, and that is like you have to communicate if you're starting off acting at a young age everyone's older than you you have to be able to communicate what you want and what you like and how you like it and have that knowledge before anything else, obviously you're still gonna grow. They'll obviously know more than you. But having a base knowledge is so important, like so important. 
Mm-hmm. It's like the, the the importance of opinion is, is really important for your for your own opinion to develop. That is is really key, actually. Yeah, that's good to especially as you said. There's so many adults that you're going to be working with and speaking with. If you really you have to not be intimidated. Pardon. You have to not be intimidated. Yeah, yeah, that as well. Is that as well? That yeah. <clears throat> that it depends. It also depends exactly who you're working with as well, because it might be someone that you know you look up to, and you're like, oh, oh god, shiver me yeah. timbers. <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. It. But I think it, it comes to knowledge. It does. Yeah. Um, in my opinion. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's quite interesting. I didn't. I didn't actually know that you you were one of those people that were very like hungry for like knowledge. It's very interesting. Yeah. No, like I didn't. I actually did. Like it's it's quite cool. It's quite cool to know that you know you're, you're very interested in trying to gather as much information because it just interests you. Yeah. And I, I think that's that's really cool. That's really cool. And I think a lot of people should definitely know, even if you don't like learning, right? Even if you don't like learning, which there are some people that don't. You know, they don't enjoy it. Even yeah. if you don't, just try just try it out. Just you don't go, you're just yeah. sticking. That's it. Little school says you film. You just watch it. Just chuck you know, it on. You'll we'll learn something, then you're in a room, you're in, yeah, yeah, I watched that film. Exactly. You don't have to tell them that you paid attention or not, but you've watched it. You have more knowledge on it. You know that it's a Scorsese film. Mm. It's, all of, it's like an umbrella term. Like you just, mm. that's if you don't like learning. And the more you watch it, the more you will like learning, in my opinion. Yeah. The, the more you encompass yourself with it, the more you're going to be like, oh, actually, you know what? I quite like it. I'm going <laughs> to. Go exactly. and it will help you it will help you now i've got i've got another question right it's not on my written questions here that i have i've got to think it up now it's <laughs> an abomination but, um, i'm curious on what you think on because you were telling you're telling me a lot about how you, you know earlier how everyone's when you're an actor you're, you're trying to be as many different people as possible and you're trying yeah. to uh, encapsulate that person as humanly as possible yeah what do you think in the idea of like channel channeling yourself through multiple different like f- from from what oh, fuck I've got tongue tied now isn't it <laughs> let me restart so, yeah. so if I've lost my plot now you ready <sighs> there we go I remember it I remember it yes yeah 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 so 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 what do you think about channeling your own yourself through your different characters? Like, let's say, did, was there any portion of Anne Frank that you channeled a bit of yourself in? Like, 100%. You always will have a piece of yourself in every single character. Isn't it? You literally cannot not have a piece of yourself. Because you are still you. Yes, you're playing something else, but you are still you. You can't escape that. You will always have a piece of yourself. It's your face and it's the way that you speak. It's the way that your mannerisms are. It will always be you. Yes, you might have a different language. Yes, you might have a different uh, accent. You might have different mannerisms because it's a, a real life person, but it is still you. You are playing. So, but I think it's a good thing. I think it able is you're able to ground yourself. If you have, right. And Frank did my research, blah, 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 blah. I want it to be really true to her with her, how her mind works, right? Mm-hmm. And how she was. So I obviously like practice that hard, but I'm not Anne Frank. You know, I had her diary. So I interpreted how her mind works. But how her mind works is my mind interpreting it. So it's still the way I'm thinking. This is a lot of waffle, but I really hope you understand. I know, it's good, it's good, it's good. So for me, I'm Anne Frank. I'm Anne Frank. But the core, the core in me is still me, mm-hmm. you know? So, and that for me grounds me. And for me, it's, I'm able to do many things with being the character and it not going crazy without it going mad, without it going so off the rails is because I'm still grounded to myself. So having that ground in every single character that you do, I think is important. The grounding and the core will differ but like as a person you're not just one thing you're many things you have many different emotions mm-hmm. you're many different people within your life you know you, I see myself now to myself when I was four years ago 
I am a completely different person. Yeah. Like you, you meet four year old, four years ago me, you wouldn't think it was me, you know. So each of these will change, but it is still you. So I think having that channeling yourself through it, it allows the story to come to life because you're allowed to bring yourself within it. Emotions will come in it. For me, for me, it's I do it. People may say they don't. Personally, I think that's a lie because you can't play escape. Um, but you can do method acting. You can come as far away as possible from yourself. Personality wise, you can never actually be a hundred percent not yourself. Yeah. You can't. you can't. So for me, I think embrace that. Obviously, don't make every single character the same. Like, don't make it you, because you are still somebody different. But for me, mm -hmm. I do it. I think it's great. I think it allows me to bring the character to life because it's core wise. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And on on the topic of method acting as well, like, what do you actually think about that? Because I don't even know if it's acting at this point. Like, let's take an example, right? Um, Christian Bale. Yeah. This guy literally changes his body and his seemingly himself for every role that he does. And it's a little bit scary. Yeah. Uh, it is a little bit scary. A little bit. Yeah. It's creepy. It is. But is that even acting? But that's what an actor does. You have to, like, you completely change yourself. Physically, personality-wise, you completely change yourself. Like, it's the weird part of acting, like you are playing other people. So you will completely look different. He has done it crazily, like, yeah. I can't lie, that's nuts. Yeah, like it's- the... It's nuts. Like it's borderline, should this be allowed? Yeah. But then again, you know, I, it's it's so hard to, to say because you can find people that are already what he turned himself to be so then what's the difference if he turned himself into that yes he's done it many times but there are loads of actors that already look like that so then it's like yeah you know what i mean so it's 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 a difficult one i think l most people will use method acting to a certain extent because you kind of have to it won't be to that extent and there's oh. I think it's a very it's a big variation of it you know i did method acting prior to filming I wasn't that extreme, but I did do it, kind of had to, you know, being Anne Frank, always a real person. For me, I would use method acting for a real person. Yes, I agree with that, actually. Because it's a real Definitely. person. Yeah. If it was, uh, you know, odd Joe down the road, I don't know, like, probably not. Hmm. Unless it was like, you know, Batman, fine. Yeah. You method acting for Batman because there are very... Not strict, but there are very like stereotypical of how he acts and his personality wise. Get it. Method act for that all you like. But for me, real person is more where I'll go to. It's just it's a hard one. It's he's gone crazy with that though, hasn't yeah, he? I, I I think, right. I've personally I think method onto that extent, onto like Christian Bale's extent, or like Joaquin Phoenix, for example, in Joker. Yeah. I think to that extent it, I almost don't even think it is acting, which is an incredible skill for someone to even do. Because that I'm basically saying that they've done their job so well that it doesn't even seem like they're even themselves anymore. Yeah. And sometimes it goes too far. Yeah, like, and that's what... Shining. I, pardon? Oh, yeah, The Shining. Yeah, 100%. That's that, not... That's, that's just not right. That was a bit messed up. That set was messed up. You should look into The Shining if you haven't. Yeah, the crew were doing method acting. Yes. That is messed up. It is messed up. They traumatised her. I know. Shelly, man. Poor girl. Like, that's too far. It is too far. There's Christian Bale and then there's that. And I don't even want to call that method acting. That's just like... Abuse, but... Yeah. <laughs> like, it's torture for me. Like, no. Yeah, it wouldn't go very... that far, but... Yeah, it's a very... I would, like, to be fair, personally for me... Amazing if it was an amazing role, like once in a lifetime, would I completely change myself? Yeah. Fair enough. I so would. Because for me, it's, but maybe it's okay, no, no. maybe that would make me sound nuts. But no, for it's me, fine. Go with it, go with it, go on. 
passionate about the role and I love it. You get a role. Here's the role. You just got it. The more you read it, the more you get, the more connection you have with it. And the more connection you have with it, the more you want to change yourself. And the more you want to get into them. So if you get a role where I'll have to like lose a hundred pounds or gain a hundred pounds, whichever one it is, the more I like the role and the more I get attached to the role, the more I will subconsciously do it. Mm. And if I don't want to, I will subconsciously start to become the role before, before I film. Like if they wanted me to gain a hundred pounds, but they were like, but you don't have to. In my head, okay, there's two things in my head. Ready? That just sounds like American uh, psycho. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> we're thinking about Anyway, um, right, two things, two things going on in my head. One, that's a challenge. Say I can't gain a hundred pounds. I will do it for the role because I, I might be a little bit too passionate about it. Second thing, I will subconsciously do it because I'll start to love the role too much. I will just, I'll be like completely obsessed with it. But I will only do that once I've got the role. I um, have a very strict rule for myself. Mm. In audition, I'll never think about it. Cool. Never think about it good. until recall. Then I can think about it. And then I can think about, I, I like, I play. Up on that, whoop, out of my head. Mm. Audition, I don't know audition. That's why I never speak about auditions to anyone. I don't not like it. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. I know, because people bring it up. And that's just, no. That's you know, don't bring up auditions. No. Not great. Then you start to think about it. Definitely, it's an audition that you love, and then you start to get attached, which is like unhealthy. And I would rather keep a healthy relationship with acting for as long as I can. Mm -hmm. It's a very unhealthy um, industry. So at some point, there will be an unhealthy thing. But for now, I want to keep it. Yes. So I have a very sharp, chop detachment to any auditions that I do because just can't get attached yeah priorities prioritizing what's important to you at that early stage 100 well thank you very much billy for coming on to the show i really appreciate it. it's been a it's been a lovely little chat that's been a lovely it's been quite funny as well <laughs> hope you enjoyed this one guys i hope uh, i hope you got some insightful knowledge and yeah have a lovely rest of your days peace out